got my notes and we are going to tackle the legalities of being a handyman. Um, I've had a lot of, uh, especially after the last video, emails, direct messages on Instagram, private messages on YouTube saying, hey, 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 Mr. Handyman, uh, what are you doing? Don't be giving away uh, the secrets of how to get around red tape. And I, I had to think about it and I'm going to just stick to the questions that are being asked and not get too deep into the realities and the corruption and the politics behind why certain laws are in one city and they're not in the very next city. I mean like border to border you got tons and tons of regulation and you just cross a line and there's no regulation. I did do have some experience in mixed commercial where that's uh, multifamily more than like a fourplex or a, a triplex we're talking 100 units per building or man there was one straight out of college I was like right downtown building a mid-rise like skyscraper most of my experience is in residential construction new home construction and remodel and being a handyman. I started at 15, 16 years old in the state of New York and the company I worked for did roofs, decks, sidings, additions, kitchens and bathrooms. No contractor license required, no permits except what I, uh, during my college career I would go back to New York and still do some work and we were rebuilding decks on a huge apartment complex. Each building had probably 15 units and there were one and two story decks. And there was one building inspector and he required nothing. Uh, we were proactive in calling him and asking, hey, do, do we, what do you want to see for these? And he says, oh, just take a couple photographs of how, did you just jump down? Of how deep the holes are for your caissons that are going to support the, uh, the posts. Again, no permits and zero inspections. My internship, I did my internship with a building department, uh, pretty large city, third largest city in the state, and I was involved in more commercial, no, no residential at all. And one of the jobs was a, uh, a federally funded job, and I remember it was like two weeks on the job, I handed me this clipboard with papers on it, they said, go down and interview these people, and make sure they are being paid their Davis bacon wages. I'm like, who is Davis and bacon and what, what is all this? It's a, uh, a federal regulation that if, it's, if the project is federally funded or if it's a federal project, uh, the people who are doing the work have to be paid a certain wage limit. Uh, I showed up with the clipboard, you know, I had my polo shirt on that said city of city and uh, I mean, none of, none of the workers were documented, and I swear it was like they thought it was immigration or something like that, and they were, they were panicking. I got a few people on the list to talk to me, and the rest didn't exist. After graduation, um, got hired on as a superintendent, and th those years were spent building new homes. Uh, people called them tract homes or production homes, where there's a you got to build as fast as you can cookie cutter houses and I did thousands of inspections you call up for every single phase to the local building department and call for your footer inspection your your form inspection your rebar inspection all the way up to insulation dry drywall nail inspection there's a certain drywall nail or screw on certain walls shear walls there has to be a certain screw pattern uh, for that wall is in, you know, to, to properly function as it was engineered. Now, the most common question asked is, does a handyman need a license? And does the handyman need insurance? And that answer is, it really depends on what city or county you live in. And there are so many out there that there really is no definitive answer of like, yes, you need a handyman license, and yes, you need insurance. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, 
coast to coast and I guess border to border, the average handyman is not insured and probably isn't even doesn't even have a registered business. There's a, a registered business with the sec your your state secretary of state. I think that's how it is where you register your LLC or your S corporation or your sole proprietorship, whichever one benefits you tax-wise. A business license is different from a contractor's license. Um, you've all read the headlines where um, lemonade stands shut down because they didn't have a business license. It's completely different than uh, a contractor's license. Do you need to be insured? Most handymen are not insured. Why? Most handymen are kind of flying by the seat of their pants and just making ends meet. Uh, trying to, you know, and they do a lot of cash jobs and they don't have insurance. Now, why would you want insurance? Well, you want to protect yourself um, from being sued. Uh, one way to do that is to form a limited liability corporation and also an S corporation. Different states, I know the state of New York doesn't even recognize or have an S corporation option. Sucks to be you, sorry about that. My business attorney told me that uh, in order to be sued, the uh, plaintiff, your customer, what you doing down there? You get your feet cold? Uh, has to show that there is gross negligence. Meaning it can't be just a uh, an accident it has to show that you weren't so you were very very careless in what you were doing back to the LLC uh, that is a limited liability it, it separates a person's liability from the business's liability insurance is to protect you and to protect the homeowner oftentimes you'd never use it and it is an advertising uh, it's used for advertising. We're insured. Don't worry. We're insured. Um, rarely, rarely do people use this. Uh, and in the handyman industry, there's not like a... Jeez, uh, how do I say this? If a handyman didn't have insurance, what happens? Uh, the, the handyman gets injured on the job. He can technically sue the homeowner's insurance. The homeowner would then default to their homeowner's insurance to pay off my broken ankle. Um, my ladder, and it's leaning up against the house and there's a bay window and the wind blows it over and crash through the bay window. Um, you would want to pay for it out of pocket, but if you were absolutely desperate, you would default to your insurance. If you didn't have liability insurance, the homeowner could then default to their homeowner's insurance. And this has been my experience, and I've worked in a few different states. Uh, this may not be the case in every city, county, state across the United States. What if you live in California? Man, I, I feel bad for you guys. Um, and you can't do more than $500 worth of work in one day, including materials. What the heck do you do? I, I honestly don't know the answer to that. My, it, apparently they have sting operations, undercover sting operations. Uh, I also know I worked quite a bit of time in South Florida. I know that every you can't even be a light bulb changer without being licensed with the state. South Florida. I don't know if this is statewide, but I, my experience is in South Florida. You have to go purchase a, a contractor license. Um, to be a painter, to be a cabinet installer. You can't do anything in South Florida without purchasing a specific license. Um, and you can't advertise on your truck or your van or your trailer that uh, the, the handyman specializing in replacing light bulbs, you gotta go buy a license for that. Um, but you have to have a specific number on your truck if you're gonna advertise. Um, so how do you get licensed? It's not that hard to get a contractor's license. And a contractor's license is broken up into a lot of subcategories. From a, I can't 
can't remember, special, their specialty contractor's license, a fence builder, a roofer, HVAC installation company, um, a deck builder, and even a, a remodel company. Uh, then it goes up into like building full structures. There, we'll, we'll call them A through C. So A would be your skyscraper. B would be a, a, a mid-rise, a multi-family mid-rise. And a C would be your single family to like triplex. Where you live, how do you find all this information out? Say you live in Buffalo, New York. You're going to type into Google Buffalo, New York Building Department. And then you're going to go through the menu options on what their licensing requirements are. Um, I haven't looked up Buffalo, um, but I can imagine that it's a fairly large city. They're going to have their contractor's licenses to build a structure. Then there's going to have some remodel licenses from a kitchen remodel to building a fence. And a lot of people think that it's hard to get a license which it really isn't. In areas that I've done work, it's not hard to get a contractor's license, whether it be to build a structure. Of course, building the high-rises is a little different than building a uh, detached garage or building a single-family home. So you go down to your building department. I suggest you review all the, the, uh, the requirements online. You can print off all the application my experience is you have to list that specific municipality on your insurance for a certain dollar figure common dollar figure is one million dollars for liability insurance so you show proof that you listed Buffalo New York on your insurance for single-family home building you can get the insurance before you even have the license so you got your application you got your insurance and sometimes that's all you need. Uh, some other times you have to print off an affidavit of your experience. Um, and that is you just, you just write down or type in, uh, I've been remodeling houses for XYZ company. Uh, I've done foundation work, blah, 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 blah. It's an affidavit. You, and you know what? Most people just make it, make it up. Um, so whether you make it up or if you actually did it all, you fill out your affidavit, you hand it in. Uh, the next level is an ICC exam. So you got your application, your insurance, your affidavit, and your ICC exam. Now what the heck is an ICC exam? Um, it's a test on how well you can look up code requirements for building residential houses. What do you think, Polly? You got sawdust all over yourself. Now, the next level, which would be the hardest. Easy, girl. Hey, don't be. Hey, you got your application. You got your insurance. They skip the affidavit and they want notarized letters from past employers or past customers. Your ICC exam and a whole bunch of money. There you go. Now, what does this pertain to a handyman? Most places uh, don't have a dollar figure that you can make a day. Um, there isn't usually a handyman license. You can go out and get a specialty license. Um, I was building covered patios in a specific town, uh, which is a border to the town I live in. And brand new construction, Tons of inspection, uh, inspectors on, on the active site all the time. Not worth the risk to build this, uh, build these covered patios um, without doing it through the permitting process. I went down to the building department, filled out an application. They printed me off a contractor's license. That contractor's license allowed me to build a brand new house along with covered patios. But, hi you are covered in dust. Uh, hopefully that helps. Uh, a summary is go to your local building department's website. If you live in a really tiny town it's going to be your county website. Building department. Um, if you live in a huge city like Los Angeles or something you're screwed. Um, they're going to want to nickel and dime you for everything.
I went pretty quick. Um, probably should have slowed it down a little bit, maybe broken this up into a few parts. Um, but if there is a specific number of comments that keep repeating a, a, a certain question, I'll do a video specifically on that. In other news, I went out on an estimate uh, for a basement finish. And um, I'm going to be testing out um, some software, estimating software. A lot of people have been asking, uh, how do you estimate? How do you estimate? How do you price jobs? Uh, up until this point, I haven't really used estimating software as a handyman. I used it in college, um, but that's pretty much obsolete. Um, I've been doing it by hand, doing quantity takeoffs, and I have a spreadsheet that I enter things into. But there's a lot of software on the market, and I've got one, and I'm gonna. This is the perfect application to test it out, and I'm gonna. I'll let you know how it goes in a future video. It's like shaking like a chihuahua. It's not that cold in here. <laughs>